This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. The Rev3 motherboard is officially released. We've gone through and made all the edits necessary to the design and we are finally ready to rock. Next up is panelizing the board along with some ring lights so that they're all set to be populated. But when they're soldered, how do we actually check them? I'm gonna be making a ton of these things and it's incredibly impractical to go through and check every single connection on every single board. To solve this, we're making a bed of nails jig. A bed of nails jig is a little machine that will go through and test the circuit board after it's been all soldered up. They call them bed of nails because they have a bunch of these springy little pogo pins that stick up and poke into the board to make electrical contacts for the purpose of testing. So you take your soldered board, you put it into the jig, and then you press it down so all the pogo pins will push into the board and make a contact, and then you can run your test and make sure that everything's working the way you expect it to. It's just a way to very easily put a lot of little probes all over your board exactly where you need them for your test. Now the test that you actually run depends greatly on what your board is even doing, but for our purposes, we're pretty much gonna run through and test every functionality, every feature that the motherboard has and making sure that it all works correctly. And I already designed the boards for this. And they're so freaking cool. Okay, so what the heck are these things even doing? So of the two boards, the first and most complicated one is the controller, which is actually going through and checking all of the pins on the motherboard and the communication interfaces and making the decision about whether or not the motherboard is doing what it should be. Electrically, it's actually really similar to the motherboard and I used a lot of the existing schematic from it in order to make this. Part of the reason for that is because it needs to have a similar number of pins as the motherboard to be able to check all of them uniquely. So might as well use a pretty similar chip, where it's actually the exact same chip as the motherboard to do the test. It actually has the exact same buck converter and 3.3 volt LDO is the motherboard. It also has a whole bunch of different voltage dividers and other little bits that help it check things like the power rails on the motherboard that it's testing. The 3.3 volt ADC on the microcontroller can't check a 12 or 24 or even 5 volt rail, so using a couple voltage dividers, you can step it down and be able to check that voltage with a 3.3 volt ADC. I also tossed a NeoPixel on there for status indication to see where you are in the test process. This huge footprint is for a blue pill microcontroller. It's the super popular STM32F103C8 T6. I think that's it. And the reason this is in there is because you can actually upload firmware to it to have it act like a Blackmagic probe, which is an awesome open source design for an SWD programmer. So because I've added this microcontroller to the board, it means I can upload firmware to the motherboard automatically as part of the test process. So when I start the test procedure, I can use the blue pill to flash some special test firmware to the motherboard that's being tested, run all the tests using the onboard microcontroller, the STM32F407 that's on the controller. And then once all the tests pass or fail or whatever, I can use that same blue pill to put Marlin on it afterwards so it's ready to rock right out of the gate, out of the test jig. Now I could have just broken out all the parts on the blue pill and re-implemented them on the board, but it's a ton easier to drop a fully assembled and fully tested microcontroller that I know is going to work and won't be a potential thing that will cause me trip ups and hang ups in the process of spinning this board up. Might as well just get something off the shelf that's gonna work for sure. Now this other board is where the actual pogo pins are soldered into, which connects back to the controller board with a big ol' hunk and ribbon cable. The reason the pogo pins are separated from the controller is because if there's ever a change in the motherboard down the road where the pin positions change, I don't wanna have to re-spin the entire controller all over again. It's much easier to just have it be all contained into this one cheap two layer board that has all the positions for the pogo pins and just respin that and just reuse the old controller instead of having to make a whole new one. Alrighty, let's spin them up. <laughs> 
and here it is. It was actually pretty easy getting this thing together, aside from a really weird config problem that I had for the main controller board where it was running at like a third the speed that it should be, which ended up being the remnants of me changing some crystal speed stuff from a previous motherboard, and having a really hard time getting the blue pill programmed as a Blackmagic probe, for reasons I still don't quite understand. It totally works now. Everything is spun up and doing exactly what I expected to. So I'm able to flash arbitrary code to the main controller board, and I do have some beginnings of the actual script that's going to be running on it for the test, but just for now I had the NeoPixel go through some colors just to make sure that timing is working correctly and I'm able to program it easily. Then the blue pill, which acts as a Blackmagic probe, plugs in here. A Blackmagic probe actually enumerates as two USB ports on your computer. One of them looks like an SWD port for actually flashing firmware, and the other one is just an extra UART that's built into it. So I actually have the UART from this blue pill going to a serial port on the main controller here. So I just need this one USB port plugged into my computer to both program the target board and talk serial to the controller. This USB-C port right here is so that I can check and see if Marlin boots on the target and if it enumerates on my computer. I did think about adding a USB hub onto this board just like the motherboard has and just having it all go through one USB port, but ultimately I decided I didn't want to put any other weird things in between a raw USB connection in here directly to the target board. I wanted it to be as clean cut, isolating all the variables as I possibly could make it. Because if there's a problem with the USB hub, maybe that's what I'm failing if I can't have it enumerate through this port and not actually that there's a problem with the board. So trying to trim out all the potential things that could go wrong aside from the actual thing I'm testing. And then there's this board. This thing is so freaking cool. Like I said before, this thing is pretty much just a breakout to a bunch of pogo pins. This ribbon cable plugs in on the backside and just connects all the pins essentially from the STM32 F4 to all these pinouts for the pogo pins. It was a real pain in the butt trying to get all these pins soldered to the exact right height. I ended up kind of shimming the board up on a whole bunch of little perf boards and soldering them until they all pushed down into the table surface. And that actually got them really consistent and nice and flush across the top. And if I take a motherboard and press it in, Can you hear that? It's the sound of like 62 pogo pins being pushed down. And then with a little bit of pressure pushing the motherboard to be tested down into it, it's gonna make a super good electrical connection to all the test point pads that I added to the bottom of the motherboard, along with all these through holes. All right, so this is dope and everything, but there's still two thirds of this whole thing missing. The first is the mechanical assembly of this, which is actually going to take the motherboard and put it really precisely on top of this so it's really easy to have all the pogo pins line up with the holes they're supposed to connect to and press it down and hold good constant pressure onto the motherboard into the pins so that the whole test procedure can happen. That's something that Lucian is working on right now. And then the last part, which is the code. So of the code that needs to run to make this happen, there are three portions. The first is the firmware that actually runs on the controller. This is gonna be the code that checks to see that the I2C bus is up and running, the SPI bus is up and running, and also probing all of these pins out here to see what response it gets from the target board. The way I'm writing it, it's pretty much just gonna listen over serial for some command, and then based on whatever command it gets, it'll run a test, and then it'll just barf the result of the test back up through the serial port. The other half of that is the firmware that's actually gonna be booted onto the target motherboard. I did think about doing like a JTAG boundary scan to check some things and just put the chip on the motherboard into some kind of, you know, hand holding mode where I kind of step through a debugging thing or manually flip registers and stuff. I didn't want to dive into that. I'm sure that would be a pretty cool way to do it, but I just decided to write new firmware that actually gets loaded onto this at the beginning of the test procedure, and it'll kind of talk with the controller and they can figure out what's going on between the two of themselves. So for example, the firmware that I'm writing that actually goes on the target will listen on all GPIO pins, and if it hears one of those pins go high, it will send back a response through that pin that this controller will hear. Same thing with RS-45 and SPI and I2C. If it hears a byte come over or sees a pin get flipped, it will respond back to this controller. So it knows that if it sends something out and it doesn't hear anything back, it hasn't been soldered properly or something else is wrong. And then there's the third part which marries all of this together and that is going to be a script running on an actual computer. I'll likely use a Raspberry Pi for this, but it's pretty much going to be a Python script that automates running all the tests through the controller along with flashing different firmware packages to the target board. So the first thing that will happen is someone will take a new motherboard to be tested, place it in the jig, pull down a little lever thing that presses it in, and presses go. At that point, the Raspberry Pi will flash my test firmware that goes onto the target using the blue pill, which is programmed as a Blackmagic probe. After that's done, it'll start sending certain serial commands to the controller board that gets it to run different tests. 
the Python script will walk the controller through running all these tests and it will receive back the result of all those tests. And then after the Python script is done running all the tests, it'll then flash Marlin onto the target board using the blue pill and the board's ready to rock right out of the jig. At that point, the Raspberry Pi can give a test result and say what passed and what failed. This will be really useful for if a board needs rework, it can say exactly which test failed. So when you're going to do the rework, you know about generally what area on the board you need to be looking at. And that's pretty much it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be running the Raspberry Pi headless because there's no real reason to have a screen for all of this. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is pull a Prusa and print out a result on a receipt printer. This is the one I got from my Prusa Mini and it's just so cool to get an actual printout result of a test that was run on the machine that I got in the mail. It's such a freaking cool idea. It also makes the jig a ton simpler to not have a screen. Instead, we can just press a button on the front of the jig, the Raspberry Pi will be listening to a GPIO and run the Python script when it hears it. And then once it's done and it sees what passes and fails, it just has the controller board print out the result on a receipt printer and that's it, that's the whole thing. I'll probably end up having some server running in the shop that listens over some TCP connection that the Raspberry Pi is putting out to log how the test went and have an actual online record. So the only result of whether or not it passed or failed isn't just a receipt that prints out, but that's way down the road. For now, we just need something that's going to test quickly whether or not a motherboard has been soldered correctly and if all the functionality in it works. All right, that's it for this one. In the next couple episodes, I'll be working on getting this thing integrated with the mechanical thing that Lucian's been making to actually make it easy to use this jig and then getting all the code working so that I'm running the test properly and testing a few motherboards and see if it actually works. Because Rev3 is now finally released, I'm going to be panelizing it with some ring lights and getting those panels out so I can get them in and start using those machines I built last time to actually populate some other boards. And hopefully this jig will be done in time for that so that we're ready to test them as soon as they come through the line. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has been making the boards for this project and they always come out absolutely beautiful. They made both the board for the controller along with the pogo pin board and they came out super nice. I needed these boards in kind of a rush and you'll notice I didn't get the matte black gold finish on them because I needed them quick. And they made them in like, two days or something. They were at my door within a week. And although I didn't get all the fancy stuff on it, this is still a four layer board with six mil trace and space. And it still came in that amount of time. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video.